Well, good evening. Uh, we're uh, going to take uh, another look at a, a piece of uh, HP test gear I picked up uh, in a Department of Defense auction. Um, this one I got not because I particularly wanted it, but it was uh, bundled with another piece of kit that I did actually want and that uh, uh, we'll look at uh, uh, a little later. And uh, uh, I ended up with this guy uh, as well. And so it's been uh, sitting around. It is a 4275A multi-frequency LCR meter. And these were very, very good. In fact, they uh, still are reasonably good uh, LCR meters uh, and are available uh, uh, on eBay. So this is a bit of a first look. So let's uh, zoom out. And uh, you can see my beer in the background there. But uh, let's take a, a quick look at it. Basically, how these things work is they have these, was effectively these unknown terminals. And uh, these things can give you, uh, basically, they're like a four wire Kelvin uh, style connector. And they're designed to be connected into a fixture. And then that fixture, test fixture, is where you put the, the device that you're actually measuring. Now, you can then uh, uh, have them either mounted directly on here, uh, like this little test fixture that uh, I bought, and this is the reason I haven't done the video, is that I bought this and I was going to wait until uh, this arrived, um, because this test fixture will mount on there. Or you can have them uh, with uh, BNC cabling and run them remotely and all that sort of stuff. And so the basic test fixture ha comes with... Um, uh, up to a meter of cable, so you can set that. Additionally, these things can provide uh, their own DC bias, so the, the component that is under analysis can be biased. Uh, either standard, I think, is 35 volts, um, or you can get an option. This one doesn't have it, but you get an option that has uh, 200 volts uh, DC bias. And there's a separate controller that you can get that uh, plugs into ba what uh, uh, looks like the uh, the GPIB port, uh, the I. Triple E four eight eight port at the back, uh, and has a little knob on it that you can set that voltage. Uh, I'm not going to bother requiring one of those because I'm really not going to keep this uh, this meter. It's basically uh, I got it as part of a the, another auction, and so what I'm going to go do is now that I have uh, the test meter test fixture, I'm actually going to go through check to see that it works, and then I'm going to uh, run it through uh, its standard uh, performance testing. Uh, well, at least as much of it as I can do with the equipment that I have here, and then I'll uh, sell it on eBay uh, and uh, maybe get a little bit of money back uh, for the auction I bought it. Anyway, uh, you attach your uh, uh, device on the test here, and then you can select the different quantities, you know, LCR, uh, impedance, you can select the additional quantities you want, like equivalent series, resistance, uh, conductance, and so on. Um, you can tell it uh, what circuit mode you want it to be in, whether you want it to be in serial or parallel mode. And then you can set the frequency. Now this guy will go up to 10 megahertz uh, and from 10 kilohertz. Uh, there's another one, the uh, 4274A, which will do basically from uh, DC up to you know, 25 or so kilohertz. And the two of them together give you that span from very low frequency to the high uh, 10 megahertz span. And effectively, I can set the frequency, and then I can set an oscillator level, which will give me the uh, the output uh, level that I want there. So, with that, let's uh, uh, go and uh, uh, start uh, uh, seeing if it actually works. Okay. Uh, well, I normally don't uh, advise playing with uh, uh, electronics. Uh, the beer choice for this evening is uh, Red Hook ESB. Uh, Red Hook is a brewery that's uh, located here in the Seattle region uh, and I've uh, been living here for the last 20 years and so uh, uh, I've been uh, drinking a lot of uh, uh, Red Hook, especially their Long Hammer. Uh, I do like the Pilsner, I miss uh, a lot of the Pilsners and Lagers from home. Anyway, uh, let's go and uh, turn the, the item on and let's see how it goes. Now I have not re read the manual yet so I don't know uh, what is really going on when it's uh, uh, doing the display. It did give me a little error there uh, for a moment, but it's now got uh, uh, come up and in uh, zero Farad because uh, I have uh, that uh, uh, hooked in. So let's go in and let's set uh, zero meters because we're going to hook in our little 
test fixture. We want uh, zero bias there. Let's uh, plug that in, lock that down, and now you can see that uh, we're starting to measure uh, some stuff. Let's, uh, I guess, you zero uh, it open first. So now it's zeroed open. Now uh, you're then supposed to zero this with uh, a short that goes in there and a piece of copper. Um, I don't have a piece of copper. What I have is a little piece of aluminium that uh, I created a shorting bar out of. And so if I put that and short that in there, then we should now be roughly more or less calibrated and you can see that we're reading pretty much bugger all um, uh, capacitance there. That's femtofarads. If we have a look at resistance, it should be zero because it should be an open. And inductance it should be very much the same. You know, capacitance will read some straight capacitance just simply from the things together. Now, this is why these things are popular. I just took a quick look on uh, eBay and the prices seem all over the place. Um, there seem to be some on offer you know that uh, that are working for 750 but the sold uh, ones seem to have few that went at a couple of hundred dollars and a few that went you know at a thousand dollars so I don't really know the difference uh, between it but I'm guessing that because it can still read into these quite uh, low uh, values of like the femto farads and get quite high precision that these things are, uh, uh, are still desired by people that are looking to go and uh, um, characterize some componentry. So let's take a look at uh, some component characterization. Uh, what I have here is a little, uh, and you should be able to see it, is a little 1K uh, resistor. Now these things are 1K, this is a 5% uh, accuracy, and if I stick that in and select uh, resistance, you'll see that we're reading uh, 976 uh, ohms, which is not too bad, uh, and you can see the the transfer delay I guess is that what it's saying into, or um, it's conducted so I'm not sure it might be in milliseconds or millisiemens uh, it's uh, unclear to me I'd have to read the, the manual <clears throat> but you're noticing that we're getting quite a, a, a an accurate reading I measured this um, using the four wire Kelvin um, uh, probes that I have on my uh, little Rigel DM3058 uh, and it measured at uh, 977 as well uh, let's hit, uh, there's a high resolution button here, let's hit high resolution and see what that does. You <laughs> see it basically added a, a thing, so 977.5. That's pretty much exactly what uh, the Rigol measured as well. Alright, let's take that out, let's try a different uh, guy here for a moment. This is uh, a 1K uh, resistor, let's straighten those out again, 5%. Sorry, 1K, 100K. Oh, and there we go. Let's turn off uh, high resolution. And let's try turning high resolution back on again. Yeah, 98.29K ohms. Yeah, I buy that. Uh, I can turn the frequency up if I wanted to. Doesn't really make a lot of difference to uh, resistor componentry. Um, Excuse me, but uh, we've seen it uh, reading some of, of that now. <clears throat> okay, so here I've got a little uh, 4.7 microfarad capacitor. So let's uh, drop that guy in. Let's make sure the polarization is correct. Let's drop that guy in, and uh, we're reading uh, a four nanofarad now. The interesting thing is, if uh, you remember, this is frequency selectable, and so most of the values for these capacitors are measured uh, at much lower volt, at much lower uh, frequencies. And so, look, if we go back up to 10, you'll see that I'm getting about four nanofarads of capacitance at 10 megahertz. If I come down to, you know, two megahertz, I'm not getting anything at all. If I come down to two megahertz. Hmm, don't know. Anyway, if we keep coming down, you'll see I'm now getting 648. If we come down to uh, 100 kilohertz, we're starting to get into the microfarad area. And then typically these things are uh, actually measured, you know, I think at uh, 10 kilohertz. Uh, I need to check the 10 or 20 kilohertz on the data sheet. 
uh, probably 10. Uh, and you're looking here now that I'm getting 3.7 uh, microfarad. Now, given that these are, you know, plus or minus 20%, uh, uh, things, you know, we're probably looking at a reasonable, uh, reasonable value uh, for it. And I can look at if I hit uh, equivalent series resistance, you can see that it's 1.8 ohms. Uh, so that's a quick little run through on uh, uh, the 4275A. It seems to be roughly in, uh, uh, you know, in the realm of running. Um, let's have a look, just one last thing. I happen to have a, uh, a little inductor here. Um, let's go and set inductance and let's just push uh, those into there and then see what uh, what it reads and it's reading 44 microhenries which is roughly what this thing is it's a 37 microhenry uh, component plus or minus 10 percent plus uh, the lead so overall a quick test has shown that we've got uh, we've been able to do uh, capacitance resistance uh, and inductance uh, so now it'll, uh, I'll go and uh, start walking through its, uh, its performance test. Hope you uh, found that interesting uh, and check, come in and check in the performance test uh, video.